Hi everybody, this is Amy Rich with amyrich.net. I have a project to share with you today that I made several weeks ago for my team on a Facebook Live. So what you'll find is that it might be a little glitchy, um, I might talk to them in the video, but um, what you really want to see is the project and you're going to love it. You're going to love the technique and I hope you try it. And if you do, please share it with me. I would love to see what you're working on. So here we go. All right, so today I am going to, <clears throat> I'm gonna bring this back in. I'm gonna show you a project with Heart and Home DSP. You've seen these papers, they're gorgeous. The coloring is beautiful. Um, and then on the flip side, there's always a basic gray wood grain. So I'm going to show you the pieces so that you have a good idea. Normally, of course, that would be on my sampler and then uh, very easy to show. I just think they're so homey. They're so warm. All right. So here's, here's what we're using. And what I did in advance is I, I'm sorry, I'm going to bring in my project supplies here. Um, I took a piece of basic gray and I cut it five and a half by eight and a half and then I trimmed off an inch. So basically, um, it's five and a half by seven and a half, but I want to score at four and a quarter so that it's got this little, um, side cut off on the right. And I'm just going to do my crease with my handy dandy black. And then uh, I've got a piece of the DSP and I'm going to use, here's the back side. I don't know if I, I didn't show you the back side, did I? I'm going to use the wood grain side. And again, that wood grain is in a basic gray. And on my white piece now, I am going to adhere the garden green um, color, color that I have here, or DSP. And again, remember each and every one of these has a different wood grain on the back side. And I'm just, this is cut one and a quarter, I believe. And that's just going to go right down the side. So that when I adhere it in here, um, it just shows out the side. All right, so I am really having a hard time doing any cards without a fun fold. <laughs> It's just in my nature now. Um, I love, I'm a fun fold fanatic um, and proud of it. Okay, so, and even something like that. I mean, it's a simple fun fold, right? It's not really, it's barely a fun fold. So anyway, let's um, pull in the Stamparatus. And of course, a Stamparatus is a stamp positioning tool. And if you haven't seen it at work before, I'm just... Um, what I'm doing today kind of will showcase the basics of it as well. But I have a sheet of two and, if I would have put this on right, two and a half by five uh, basic white cardstock. And I always, um, I usually, I should say, mark a corner. That way I know exactly which corner I was in. And then if it shifts at all, uh, I can find my way right back to that corner. So I'm going to make sure my grid paper is up into the corner of the Stamparatus and then I'm ready to go using my magnets. Make sure those don't click together because they do break. <laughs> and then the stamp set that I am using today is actually Amazing Silhouettes. And this was a free set to everyone who attended on stage. And I thought um, this would be, sorry, this dang cord. Um, this would be a great opportunity for me to share it when maybe some of you are like, I'm not sure what to do with it. This is um, maybe a little bit fancier than um, you would want, but hey, <laughs> it's, it, I mean, it's not super fancy, but you know what I mean. So I put my stamp where I want it on my white paper, and then I will close my Stamparatus over it. And actually, I don't need both plates. Um, I only need the one. I'm just going to get that out of the way. And then we're going to ink that up. I'm going to bring in three colors of green. So 
pear pizzazz is going to be first. And I've got evening evergreen and garden green. Garden green, remember, is the color in the DSP. So it's um, what I definitely wanted to include that green. But I wanted some different shadings of green. So I'm going to take my uh, pear pizzazz and I'm going to ink up my tree or my tree outline, I guess. It's a unique stamp set because it's got those um, negative images. And then I've got my two sponge daubers and I do use one for each color. So I'm gonna um, grab the garden green next and I'm just gonna dab some garden green in a few different places with my sponge dauber. And then I'm going to go back with Evening Evergreen and do the same thing. And maybe try to remember a little bit where you went the first time. <laughs> and then you're just adding um, these different colors in here. All right, so then you will stamp this onto your white. And you're going to get just a little bit of variegated color. So you can see how pretty that coloring is. Well, I decided that I wanted to do some embossing in the same space where my images are or where my, where my stamping is. So I'm going to take out my, my chamois and clean off my stamp. It's one thing I love about the chamois. It's really easy to work with and... You can see it's clean, believe it or not. It just is stained. That doesn't bother me. And then we're going to take the, um, the same image and we're going to ink it up with Versamark ink. And I'm sorry, I'm just trying to pull you up here on my computer screen. So it just took a minute there. And I have a really dirty pad. So... I probably wouldn't have even had to clean off my stamp because it wouldn't have made any difference. But I'm going to ink this up really well with Versamark. And now when I flip it, it is going to stamp it on the very same space. That's what a Stamparatus does. It, it makes it um, location-wise stamp exactly where, um, where you want it to every time, which is great. So... Now I can use any color ink and emboss it with clear embossing powder. And then you've got every color of embossing. And it makes it, um, it gives you options, right? So I love having, having 50 colors or whatever we have. Yeah, 50 colors at my disposal for embossing. So now, what you're going to notice is that as we, as we heat this, um, it's going to just get a little bit darker after we um, melt the powders. It'll see how that, uh, hopefully you can see that on camera, how it just darkens it up a little bit because you have the, what looks like white powder over the top of it. And now it is melting that so it's becoming clear again and I just um, hold it kind of in the light so that I can see that I'm done or where I'm done and in my cold basement it takes a little bit longer it is chilly down here my fingers right now are like icicles <laughs> All right, so what we've got now is a shiny um, stamped image or negative image. And then I'm going to uh, move this out of the way and I'm going to show you a second way that you can um, use regular ink for your embossing. So what some people do, which is fine, um, is... They stamp 
regular ink, and then they hurry up and sprinkle the powder on it. And I'm telling you, you don't have to, you don't have to hurry. You don't have to do it that way. Um, and here's, let me grab my, I'm going to grab this piece and also the inside. So I'm going to grab these two pieces. I want my sentiments embossed now. And I have chosen for my sentiments um, the Blessings of Home stamp set. So um, I'm going to use the thank you for inspiring me. And then you are a real blessing to everyone around you. So we're going to do embossing with regular ink pad. I'm going to take the inside message first. And I am going, let me get a clean Versamark pad. That looks horrendous. All right, this is much cleaner. So I'm going to ink it up there first. And then I'm going to ink it up on my garden green. And then stamp it. And what that does is just um, gives it that little bit of sticky it needs to get my embossing powder on. You're not going to be able to see it right. Just hang in there. And it, well... Let's put you out of your misery. <laughs> so I'm going to um, emboss the, those now. And now we've, we'll have a little shiny raised area um, that is garden green in color. And you can see it doing its magic as it melts those powders. So just go ahead and use that Versamark first on your stamp and then it works just fine um, to emboss, which is good to know, right? Just make sure. I don't know if that worked or not, but oh yeah, there it comes. Okay, so now we can put our card together with all of those lovely embossed pieces that um, we don't normally think to do with our regular ink pads. All right, so the first thing, I'm gonna bring in my tailor-made. Um, I know, Amanda, we don't need 50 colors of powder. We can um, use our clear powder and do it however we want. I'm finally seeing your comments, unless there weren't any before. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna punch this out with my tailor-made tag. And then I have a white one here also, um, just to help with strengthening that a little bit, since the DSP is, is a little thinner. We'll just layer the two together. And, oops, sorry. This is typical for me to take stuff apart. <laughs> it's very common. Okay, so that just thickens it up a little bit. Then we're going to bring in our card base, and we'll put this in the middle. Notice it does curl it a little bit when you heat it. So what I do typically, if it's a big piece like this, I just make sure to get every edge, um, because the most important part to me is that it, it sits flat on the edges. So just get all the edges really well, and then um, adhere it to the inside of the card. Now we're going to add this piece right here with a bunch of dimensionals. Um, if you watch me on my channel or on my, um, on my lives on Facebook at all, you know I am a huge fan of a lot of dimensionals. I may as well just take the dimensional sheets, the foam sheets, and put them on the back because I feel like that's how many dimensionals I put on. I do not like it to sink. So that is, that's how I get around that. And because it's winter here in Minnesota, we'll probably find these um, little pieces all over the place because of static, but that's okay. <laughs> and then we're just going to add this to the center of the card. And um, that means it will hang over a little bit. And that's good. That's the way I want it. And then really simply, this is going to go next. So what I'm going to do is dimensionalize that again. 
So it's going to have like double dimensionals on this one. And I'm going to put three of them on there. And notice it, one is going to hang off the side. So in that case, I'm going to double the dimensional because this is already popped up once. So this um, double dimensional will pop it up the first time and then the second time with the rest. If that, I don't know if that makes sense to you or not, but it's my, it's how I, <laughs> it's how I tuck myself into things. And also, you'll notice I am lining up the planks uh, from the background to the planks on my um, punched image. Oops, I really need to take all the papers off the dimensionals. That would really help. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. All right, so really that's it. I had, I had played with ribbon a little bit. I had played with embellishments a little bit. And I wanted nothing. Um, I do that actually a lot of times I end up with no extra embellishments on, on a project because I just like the simplicity of the way it looks. And I love, I like the shininess of that background. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I used two new stamp sets and some new DSP.